Hey, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome to our moment of empowerment. This is your host, none other than Miguel A. Ramos, right? A stands for angel, if you didn't know. Listen, I'm here to empower you. I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to just come and bring you energy uh, today, right? Cameras are acting up a little bit, but listen, nevertheless, the show must go on. It is Friday, TGIF, right? So you better be happy it's Friday. You know, tomorrow you get a great weekend, but guess what? The work doesn't stop there. You have to continue to motivate you, to pump yourself up. If you've been working for somebody else throughout the whole week, the weekend is for you. The weekend is for you. You self-develop, self-motivate, self-transform, self-empower, whatever it is that you have to do, that you may continue to tackle your life, right? Tackle your life. Not just the day, not just the week, your life, right? So it'll be an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. I'm just, you know, I got my little plaque out here. Uh, you know, they gave it to me in my church for Father's Day. I just want to, you know, thank everybody in my church for that. But it's, uh, you know, it's a father. Let me just put it right there. It says father and it says funny, patient, strong, Hebrew, reliable, and provider. So I was keep it over here just to remind me of one of the many things that I am, right? So, if you are just joining us, listen, look at somebody say, it's no problem. If you're just joining us and you want to catch up with the videos, I tend to do topical teachings throughout the week. And for this week, we've been talking about conflict. We've been talking about, you know, the importance of conflicts, how to resolve conflict, not just in relationship, but in the workplace, not just in the workplace, but in the church, you know, not just in the church, but in any atmosphere that you're part of. You know, conflict is always going to be part of life. Conflict will find you. Conflict will seek you out. Conflict will dig you out of your comfort zone and bring tension and sometimes that tension is not good so we learn how to resolve that tension how to bring the best out of conflict to the point now where you should be wanting to embrace conflict because it does all these great things but wait there's one more thing you know i feel like uh like those infomercials right when you buy one thing it says but wait there's more if you call in the next 10 minutes we'll give you Two for the price of one. And yes, listen, there is more to conflict than you know it. So today I want to speak to you, or rather I want to ask the question, you know, have you ever wondered, why do I have to deal with conflict? Like, why does conflict come? Like, okay, listen, I'm a person, I keep to myself, I don't mess with nobody, I don't go in nobody's business, you know, I'm me, myself, and I. Why does conflict still find you, right? It seems like you have this magnet, and you have this, the words written, conflict here, conflict here, and it just comes and finds you. You could be minding your own business at the end of the day, on a Friday afternoon, out of work, coming home, you go to the supermarket, you're trying to get your groceries so you could get ready for the weekend, Boom, conflict finds you there. And you're like, why? Why does it find me? I didn't do anything. What did I do? And we start to ask the critical question that we ask each other or ourselves rather is, what did I do in the previous life, right? That I deserve, that I'm deserving of this life. So, but it's not too bad, my friend. Listen, keep your head up. But today I want to speak to you about not just why does conflict happen, but I want to tell you the purpose of conflict. Believe it or not, <clears throat> there's this universal law that uses conflict to bring the better out of us, to make sure that your core values and your and the importance of what you believe, whatever it is that you believe, to make sure that they're still core and true to who you are. And believe it or not, ladies and gents, that is the purpose of conflict in a nutshell. They come to test who you are. They come to help you persevere. They come to bring out of you and extract all the moral goodness that you say you stand on. For example, if you're a person that say, you know, you don't believe in drinking, or you don't believe, you know, in hard party, or you don't believe in cursing, or you don't believe in cheating, you don't believe in lying, then well, guess what? There's gonna to, there are going to come conflictual situation that is going to prove that moral standard of who you are. So conflict comes to test who you are, and not just test, but like iron sharpening iron, it comes to make you better, to make you more sharper, to bring, to bring brightness out of you, to bring, you know, that edge out of you. So believe it or not, you should embrace embrace conflict and I'm going to share a scripture in a little while towards the end of the teaching that is going to bless you. You know how I am. I got to bring the word of God. So let's get to this at the beginning. What is conflict actually? Well, conflict is a power struggle. It is a struggle. It is a battle between two entities, between two things, two belief system, two value system, two core uh, 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 foundations of standing, and they're battling each other. So when you, when you become, uh, when you get to in a state of discord, in a state of brokenness, it usually comes through a choice. So think about it. If you have to make a choice in life, right, and, and you're conflicted with that, whether it is, you know, you got to venture out 
and, and, and take on a new job or take on a new project or meet a new person or venture on in a, in a new relationship or whatever it is, you're going to be conflicted with those choices. Why? Because you are probably used to something or you're, you're, you're probably standing on a certain value and then now making this newfound choice makes you, or, or makes you broken within yourself or makes you conflicted within yourself, right? And it also happens, believe it or not, when you're in a group or setting with more than two people. So let's say, for example, you're driving in a car and you're driving in a car, the person who's driving, you know, that you come to an intersection and you're on the passenger side, the person's driving is on the, on, on the driver's side. And now that you ask, which way do we go, left or right? Well, the driver wants to go left, you want to go right. And what we do is that we tend to make choices based on our past and our present. And what we tend to do is we tend to almost kind of like force what we have experienced on the newfound choice. So we make choices based on our past and our present onto our future. So let's say in my in my past, I'm the passenger, and in the past I've you know I've experienced a good restaurant when I went to the right side. Or I had a, a good experience when I went to the right side. So now every other choice that I make is gonna go to the right. You know, there's something about the right side that just is conducive to me, is good to me. But let's say you have the opposite experience. You had a bad experience going right. You had bad relationship going right. So you're gonna say, no, I'm gonna attempt to go left. So boom, this is where the conflict comes in now. Now the conflict comes in because now you have two different choices uh, that you have to make and you go back and forth. So we tend to make choices based on the values, based on our experience, based on what we've been through, that if we, believe it or not, do not consider the other person, we're going to choose what is best conducive to us. And it's something, believe it or not, that works in the subconscious. You do it just without thinking, you just do it because it's embedded in there. But believe it or not, this these choices, they bring conflict into our life. That person wants to go left, you want to go right, boom, there's a conflict. So again, it's when two systems comes against each other. So the first thing that you want to do is when you go through the situation is you want to, first, number one, consider the other person. Understand and try to value what their system are. Why do they make choices uh, of that magnitude or, or that kind or that way or, you know, that, that decision. Why do they make choices? So trying to understand, trying to speak and communicate with the other person, you know, why are your choices always so radical? Why are your cho choices are always so abstract, so unique, so, so, you know, straight down to the core? Trying to understand where that person's moral value is at can help you understand more the situation or the conflict that you're involved in. Believe it or not, many people choose what they choose not based on what they are trying to do against you or not really disvaluing who you are, but it's something that they were taught, you know? For example, one thing that I was taught in my life, you know, family comes first, family comes first. So guess what? If I have an engagement with my family and I have, let's say, a business engagement somewhere else, I'm going to tend to lean more towards family because you don't disappoint family. Now, on the other hand, you can be somebody to say, well, you know what? My family understands. I was taught that, listen, business comes first. You have to, you know, provide. You have to do that. So you'll probably tend to make a choice based more on business. Now, does that make you a bad person because you don't support family? No, it just makes you different. That's all it is. It makes you different. And when you understand the differences between one another, then you can better manage the conflictual situation and you can tackle it head on and have that resolution, right? So understanding the moral value of the person. Again, conflict comes, believe it or not, to exercise. And I want to try, I want to say maintain the system. Let's say I want you to look at your system, whatever it is that you have learned, whatever it is that you have been taught. I want you to look at your system almost like a conveyor belt on a machinery. You put one thing on one end, right? If you ever been to a factory, I used to work in a factory for a couple of years when I was a teenager. But you know, one end of the factory, you put something and at the other end of the factory, it comes out a different thing. And we used to put these papers, these cardboards, these little trinkets on one end of the factory and by the time it went all the way to the end of the other factory it came out of perfume box that's what we used to make perfume boxes and everybody in that line had something to do the person put the glue on the one person put the cardboard the one person put the paper on the one person grabbed the little staples together the other person put it together and one person packaged if any one of those people were not subject to that machine catastrophic things would happen accidents you know malfunctions, 
the, the box will come out wrong. What I'm trying to tell you is that when there is a system in operation and you are not conducive or you don't work with the system, chances are you're going to conflict with the system. And that's what happens in our life. When we conflict with a system that has already been placed, then we tend to have catastrophic outcomes, right? Let's say you go to a workplace and there is a system already in place and you're trying to overthrow or undermine that authority. That's where a catastrophic situation comes. That's where tension comes in, misunderstanding, anger, all these other things come in. Why? Because now you have come against the system that has been established. Likewise, you have a system that you operate under, and that system can be your moral values, your core values, whatever you were taught, right? Whether it's from religious background, from family background, from cultural background, from racial background, whatever it is, you were taught a system. You may say, man, you're just talking smack. But no, there is a system embedded in your psyche, in your psychological, in your in your mind or subconscious that you live by that. You know, this is why, you know, a lot of us sometimes, you know, whether the color of your skin, you think that you're being racially profiled or you think that people are being biased against you. It depends how you grew up, what you were taught, right? Your color of your skin, your culture, all these things things uh, play a factor in your moral values that when conflict comes or when I want to say decisions come into play is going to conflict you because it's going against something you believe you know when it goes against something you believe you stand to you, you stand guard and you start to defend what it is that you are that you believe in and most of the time if it's offended then this is where tension anger and hostility comes in. So this is what you have to understand, not just your moral value, but the other person as well. They're not trying to insult who you are, neither are they trying to insult um, your culture or your background or your moral values. They're just trying to choose based on theirs, right? So that's what we have to be considerate of one another. Exercise empathy, right? So again, so I'm gonna go um, a little bit deeper, uh, if that's okay. Um, when we when we make these decisions, believe it or not, we are genuine in the decisions that we're making. We're not doing it to be biased. We're not doing it to be, um, you know, discriminating any other. We just do it because that's what we were taught. You know, that's what we were taught. So now that you understand your foundation, then you can understand the structure on top of it. Now I want to share something with you um, as we go along, and I, and I love this. This is one of uh, as I always say, this is one of my favorite scriptures. But I have so many favorite scriptures in the Bible. But the reason I, I enjoy this this much is that when you understand the purpose of conflict, you know, it comes to better you, believe it or not. You're probably saying, what? Get the out of here. No, for real. It comes to better you. I have become who I am because of conflict in my life. I have had so many conflictual situations in my life that I lost count. I stopped counting at like about age 20 or something like that. You know, I'm not telling you my age, so don't worry. But <laughs> but I stopped counting. Why? Because um, every conflictual situation that I used to have, I used to look at it as bad. I used to look at it as karma. I used to look at maybe I did something wrong. What did I do in my previous life? You know, if you believe in reincarnation and all that stuff. I used, to, I used to think about all these things and I used to try to better myself, but conflict will still come. Conflict is like the rain. No matter where you go, no matter where you put yourself in, you're going to experience it one day of your life, right? So, so I thought that it was something that I was doing, but then I understood and I embraced it that it actually came to better my life. And when I understood that, I embraced it to the fact where I started to exercise my faculty, my senses, and my abilities to sharpen myself in the midst of conflict. So look what James says. This is James, the brother of Jesus, his flesh brother, uh, younger brother of Jesus. Of course, the younger brother, Jesus was the older. But look what he says in his first chapter in the second verse of James. He says, he says, my brother, he says, count it all joy when you enter various trials. From the beginning, I would think that this guy was smoking something funny. How can you be happy when you go into trials, right? Nobody likes trials. Nobody likes to deal with circumstances, with issues and tissues and conflict, right? Nobody wants to deal with that. But look what it says after that. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith, your trust, your endurance, your, your hope, the testing of your faith produces patience. The first thing it says is knowing. See, if you don't know that conflict comes to better you, you're constantly going to look at it as a bad situation. 
constantly going to look at it as a bad situation. It's almost kind of like when you think that the world is against you, you you're going to look at everybody as an enemy. You're right? So, so if you do not get over your past, if you don't get over your hurt, your unforgiveness, your, your, uh, your um, I want to say, you know, all these circumstances that, that has happened to you in the past, if you don't get over yourself and understand that, listen, life is life and life comes to each and every one of us and you have to embrace life the way it comes and when it comes, deal with it to the best of your ability and pat yourself on the back for, for overcoming the situation, whether you crawl yourself through it, whether you claw yourself through it, whether you pull yourself out, whatever it is, listen, you can come out with bumps and bruises, but be happy that you came out. And when you overcome that and you understand that trials comes to everybody, whether you're just or unjust, whether you're righteous or unrighteous, whether you're tall or, or small, uh, big or thin, whatever, conflict comes to everybody. And when you understand that you can better yourself from the conflict, knowing that now you should count it joy. Because you know it comes to produce to produce who you are. When conflict comes, you get to maintain and maintenance your system. So let's say for other words, let's say you are one that you don't tolerate the drinking of alcohol. I'm just putting something out there. You don't tolerate drinking of alcohol, right? Conflict will come where let's say you may have friends that may be drinkers. Now, the conflict is, you know, somebody said, yeah, you want to go hang out with me? Uh, yeah, I want to go out with Johnson. You know, Johnson is a you know, pretty good friend. Remember, this is my fictional friends, Johnson and Williamson. You know, but Johnson is a heavy drinker. So then now this, your moral values are going to be tested. And this is with a conflict. Man, he's a good guy, good friend. But I just don't like being around him when he drinks. So now are you going to value the friendship more than the atmosphere? You know what I'm saying? So, so this is where conflict comes in. And you have to make a, a choice. Same thing whether it's at work, whether it's starting your business. If you're starting a business, what are your moral values? We tend to put what we believe into our business. But you remember that in your business, you're not just catering to people that are like you. You're catering to other people from other culture, other race, other, you know, ethnicity. And this is what you have to now, boom, you know, make a, a standard or, or a judgment call or whatever it is. So if you know and you understand that conflict comes, you could sharpen yourself through these situations and become a better you. It says knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, let me close with this because it says count it joy when you enter trials. Because if you know, knowingly, knowingly, that when you go into a trial, you can produce, you can it tests your faith to produce patience, you're probably thinking, why do I need patience? Well, let me give you some pointers. I wrote it down over here in my book so you can see. Let me give you some of the things that patience gives you. Patience will keep you content. It will keep you satisfied. It will keep you focused. It will keep you determined. It will keep you steadfast. It will keep you coherent, right? visually coherent mind uh, mentally coherent it will keep you alert it will keep you ready steady and never never in a hurry so patience does all these things patience allows you to stay focused and steadfast and watch this more importantly patience basically is tolerant and even tempered why do we have to be tolerant and even tempered? Because on a journey to success, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a minister, whether you are in a relationship, whether you are an employer, whatever it is that you're doing on the race or on this journey in life, you have to be tolerant. Tolerant of what? Of whatever the life throws at you. Whatever bombarding life throws at you, you're going to have death in your family. You have to be tolerant and you have to be even tempered in that. You can't lose yourself. You have built yourself up all through your life, all your 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever years you are, you built yourself up to be this great man of honor, great woman of honor. And then now you have to be temp uh, tolerant and even tempered. Tolerant of what comes on the outside and even tempered of what happens on the inside that you may not lose yourself. Imagine you losing yourself in a business meeting. Imagine you losing yourself in a relationship. Imagine you losing yourself in ministry. Imagine you losing yourself as a leader. You cannot lose yourself because your integrity has cost you too much to build to what it is, right? The fans, the, the, the brand that you have made, it costs you too much to build what it is. So you have to be tolerant of what's on the outside trying to 
bash you on the inside and then even temper from what's on the inside from getting out. I'm not saying that to show emotion, but listen, sometimes you have to learn when to be weak and sometimes you have to learn when to be strong. Sometimes you have to understand when to be balanced, right? When to be off balance. You have to learn those things. So patience produces those things and allows you to have those things. Listen, I struggle just like you struggle. I have conflict just like you have conflict. I have situation just like you have situation. But Every day I have to be tolerant. I have to be even tempered. Why? Because not only do I have my families looking up to me, my children, my son, my, my sons, my daughter, my wife, those around me, but I have a congregation of many people that look to me to strength, to perseverance, to endurance. You know, I have, you know, home, so many business partners, clientele that I have that look at me and they say, you know what? I understand that this guy is genuine, you know, and sometimes, yes, I get weak. Sometimes I feel like screaming and quitting, but I don't. I have to persevere. I have to be tolerant of what the world throws at me. Why? That I can be a better me tomorrow. I make decisions, not on my past, not on my present, but based on where I'm going, based on my future. I'm packing a bag because I'm going on vacation and I know that the weather is going to be sunny, bright, and full of joy. So I'm ready, got my suntan lotion, got my glasses with me, got my drink with me. Why? Because I'm going to have fun. And that's how you have to make decisions, ladies and gentlemen. You have to make decisions based on where you're going, not on where you've been. Stop, leave the depression behind, leave the low self-esteem behind, leave the schisms and is behind leave all the things behind and continue to build yourself towards where you're going that's what you have to do so allow trials when you get into trials listen bring it right on fear bring it right on uh, circumstances bring it right on situation bring it right on and when you go into that trial be aware be alert be vigilant right be wise and anytime situation comes aha uh -huh, this comes to test my character that comes to test my perseverance that comes to test my knowledge that comes to test my wisdom embrace it Think about it. Use wise decision. Let iron sharpen iron that when you get out of that fiery furnace, not one ounce of smoke will be smelled upon you. Why? Because you're tenacious, you're strong, you persevere, you're diligent, and you're unique. Ain't nobody else like you, right? So tackle those things. Count it out with joy. Know that every tired trial you go through is producing in you perfect patience, perfect peace, and perfect love. All right? Well, my friends, listen, Woo, I wish I could talk to you a little bit more. I was just feeling the fire right there, but I got to go. And I want to thank you all for, you know, just viewing this message, just being over here with me on a moment of empowerment. This is your host, Miguel A. Ramos. Listen, I got a couple of announcements for you. Um, you can see that if you follow me on my Instagram, let me put it right there. You follow me on my Instagram. I am going to be uh, in New Hope Baptist Church. That is uh, Saturday June 24th, New Hope Baptist Church from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. It is a men's prayer breakfast. If you want to be empowered, you're a man, you're a, you know, a young man, whatever, you want to be empowered, you know, come down to New Hope Baptist Church. This is in Freehold. We're going to have a moment of empowerment. We're going to have a great uh, breakfast over there. Uh, the cost is only $10 for adults and $5 for, uh, for children. Uh, I believe that this prayer breakfast is for men. Uh, but listen, go on my Instagram, go on my Facebook, get the information. It is from 9 to 11. If you're in Freehold, come be empowered. I'm going to be speaking there about perseverance. Perseverance. How to persevere through life circumstances, situation. So come and be empowered. Also, if you haven't done it already, go to my website, miguelaramos.com. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Put a blog out there. Uh, you know, uh, let me know on Facebook what you think. I have so much empowerment content. Or you want to work with the kid. You want to work with your boy. Listen, motivational speaker, leadership development, personal development, executive coaching, whatever it is, you know, I can do it. I can develop a custom-made system just for you. And for a limited time, listen, we're doing a complimentary leadership evaluation. Go there on my website, right there on the right-hand corner. Click, book an appointment, and we can do a 15-minute leadership evaluation complimentary from yours truly, right? At the end of this broadcast, right there in the comment below, I'm going to put the website, miguelaramos.com. Click on it. Check on it. Check me out. Let me know what you think. Well, ladies and gentlemen, listen, it's Friday. It's an awesome. Have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Remember, be motivated, be in power, and be transformed. This is your kid, Miguel Ramos, signing off. Peace.